yesterday's attacks and some other things. Some say that he does have time to Muslim extremists. I don't know. Iceland, an island country in the North Atlantic Ocean with barely more than 350,000 citizens. Popular for its beautiful landmarks and picturesque views, the tiny country is yet fraught with numerous problems, many of them directly or indirectly related to human rights issues. Child poverty is one of these issues, which saw a dramatic rise in Iceland after the 2008 economic downturn. A report published by Save the Children Iceland in 2014 stated that in Europe, almost 27 million children were at risk of poverty or social exclusion. In Iceland, that amounted to roughly more than 12,000 children or 16% of all children. Although the number of children living in poverty in Iceland hasn't increased in the past few years, reports indicate the severity of their poverty has drastically increased. According to a report by Humanium.org, some of the key issues that poor Icelandic children face are health problems, emotional strife, sexual exploitation and labour exploitation. Besides these poor children, the disabled are considered to be among the most vulnerable group in Iceland. While Icelandic laws prohibit discrimination against this group and urge that such persons receive preference for government jobs, critics say the laws are not fully enforced and the disabled make up a majority of the poor population across the country. In the words of Swedish human rights defender Thomas Hammerberg, the current non-discrimination provisions in Icelandic law do not protect all vulnerable groups of people to the same extent. People with disabilities, older persons, members of ethnic and religious minorities would benefit from stronger guarantees against discrimination. Despite what the Icelandic authorities claim, the country is plagued with one of the worst forms of discrimination, that is, violence against women. Actually, I've like, experienced people like grabbing you by the and being pushed into a toilet booth and somebody trying to do something and you just, it was a part of going downtown to protect yourself. Iceland is not a safe haven for women. When you have uh, gender-based violence in such great proportion, you cannot look at a country as a safe haven. Over the past decade, Iceland has passed ostensibly great laws on workplace equality and equal pay. Yet, women in Iceland are suffering from what scholars have termed the Nordic paradox, which means despite significant structural equality for women in some areas, the country maintains disproportionate instances of violence against them. The violence is something that's always been there. And one of the reasons why we see that it seems to be growing in this country, may be the anxiety that men are feeling, which can increase uh, violence in the home. We hear a lot about the powerful Viking heritage that Iceland has and the strength of its women while the Viking men were away. But the picture is a lot more complicated than that, isn't it? Men in Iceland are experiencing like they are watching a football game and they have been relatively confident that they, their uh, team would win. Now the position is 3-4 and it's not quite sure if their team wins or the women's team. So they're very scared and very anxious. Every day we have to discuss this because there is uh, so uh, un uh, unjust that uh, women, in many cases, are not uh, accepted. Their qualities are not accepted as men. To some, even such structural equality has just been exaggerated. As for pay equality, for example, human rights expert Francis Rede believes the gender pay gap cannot be divorced from the highly segregated job market in Iceland. Women's work is concentrated in public service jobs, such as nursing and elementary teaching, both notably low paid. 
my husband does always have a better salary than me. <laughs> although, although we have a, like, um, the education is almost alike, but just because he's a man. <laughs> I don't want my girls and grandchildren to be at that. But it's important to, uh, to notice the difference between the sexes in uh, the working force and the working place and uh, to take part in the, the struggle for uh, equality on uh, the market. Some steps have been made in the right direction, but we still have uh, our way to go. The brutality of life for Icelandic women was highlighted by a 2020 study for the Scandinavian Journal of Public Health, which revealed the prevalence of intimate partner violence, IPV, and the ways used to inflict injury, from punching to strangulation and the use of weaponry. During the coronavirus pandemic, stories of domestic violence in Iceland have risen. Two women were reportedly murdered by family members in the first weeks of the country's partial lockdown, a significant rise for such a small country. That said, physical assault goes hand in hand with sexual assault in Iceland. According to a national survey by the University of Iceland in 2018, one in four Icelandic women has been raped or sexually assaulted during her life. A year before, the country was rocked by allegations of sexual harassment made by a group of more than 600 female politicians against their male peers. There are stories about ministers uh, ogling female politicians behind when, when the, the members are going into the podium to deliver, spe deliver speeches. So this is happening here as well. Uh, and that's something we have to address. These dark realities contradict Iceland's claims that it is an ideal land for women. To top it all, such acts of violence are mostly protected by a justice system that shares the perspectives of the male perpetrators. Meanwhile, Iceland is notorious when it comes to babies with Down syndrome. Since prenatal screening tests were introduced in the country in the early 2000s, the vast majority of women, close to 100%, who received a positive test for Down syndrome terminated their pregnancy. The law in Iceland permits abortion after 16 weeks if the fetus has a deformity, including Down syndrome. I think it's being used uh, because these numbers look uh, bad. It looks as if uh, we are out to eliminate people with Down syndrome. It's misrepresenting uh, the screening problem in Iceland. Violations of human rights in Iceland are not confined to the citizens alone. Refugees coming from war and famine-stricken countries have just found themselves in another new predicament. Neglected at best, these refugees are living under inhumane conditions and their protests are usually met with police brutality. See, because in Iceland, it's just... It's, dis it's disgusting, they get treated like dogs. Is there to speak to somebody about what was happening here? Yeah, you realize that if you post anything about this, you will be, uh, you will be sued about it. You are not allowed to be inside this building. Who's gonna sue us for it? UTL. Okay. So why would they sue us? Because you are not supposed to be in there. Nobody's supposed to be in there. You are not allowed to have cameras in there. Yeah. Uh, but do you feel it's okay? That, what? Uh, do you think it's okay that the refugees have no rights to visitors? No questions. All in all, things are not as picturesque in Iceland as they seem to be, especially when it comes to human rights issues. The self-proclaimed champion of human rights seems to have a long road to go before it becomes a real hero.